So as you guys know, a couple of weeks ago, I designed a hitch cover for my truck when I did some ASA ABS printing. All went pretty well. Well, until it didn't. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can modify a pre-existing design by using the STL, which is notoriously a problem. See, the problem arised is when I went through the car wash. The hitch cover had worked out perfectly until then, and yeah, I'm not supposed to go through the soft cloth. I get it. Car guys, cut me some slack. It's the middle of the winter and it's cold. I don't want to put a rag on my truck. So yeah, I went through the soft cloth car wash and I always watch it as it goes around. I always suspect like some sensor is going to go bad and it's going to smash into my truck. Well, I do that even with the, the, non, the no touch. But as I'm watching it go around the back of my truck, I noticed something black fly through the air. And I was like, what the hell was that? It literally just ripped something off of my truck. What was it? So as it's coming around the front, I noticed that the car wash attendant walks into the unit and picks up something and throws it in the bed of my truck. He wanted to make sure I didn't leave without it, even though it was broke. All right. So once the car wash is done, and thankfully it didn't rip anything else off of my truck, I just go ahead and leave. And later when I get home, I look in the bed to find my hitch cover. That's what got ripped off. It actually sheared the pins completely off. So as those rags came around, it's hooking the edge of the hitch cover and then just extracted it. Now, unfortunately with this design, and it wasn't a design I created, this is something I found on Maker World, the layer orientation is not optimal, but the way it's designed, there's really no way to fix it. Like this is the only way this thing can really be printed. And um, I don't know. I mean, you could print it in other orientations. Don't get me wrong. But the problem is it would be a bunch of color changes. It just doesn't make sense. This is really the only orientation that you can print it. So because it's less than ideal for layer orientation, that means we're going to be putting pressures on it in line with the layers. That way they just rip apart. There's only one thing we can do to actually make it stronger, and that's to make it thicker. So we're going to jump into CAD. Now, whether you use Onshape or Fusion, doesn't matter. These concepts are the same. But we're going to jump in and we're going to modify it and try to strengthen it up a little bit. And we're going to be doing that on the STL that someone else designed. Now, a couple of ways I thought about handling this, because I really thought about, OK, how could I just make this stronger? I can't improve the situation, the situation being that this is printed in a, well, not ideal print orientation. How could I resolve that? Well, the one thought I had was to, instead of making this a tab, make it a hole. That way I can run my pin through it that I normally use on my hitch in conjunction with thickening the walls substantially. So the inside of the walls, bringing the, the walls thicker here. That seemed like a logical solution. Now, whether I'll be able to do that or not is a good question, but I think that might be the way to go. The first thing I'm gonna try to do, which it's probably gonna shit all over, is go to the mesh menu and go to modify and go to convert to mesh and try to, yes, the, war the warning of the triangles. I still think, you know, the last couple of models that I've tried to do this with did not hang my machine up permanently and create death for it. Just like that. It converted. Perfect. Now, what that does to this down here when we try to print that RAM in there, you see that RAM, and we can color it because it's separate pieces, maybe. I don't know. We might just ruin that. We might have just ruined that. We'll find out. We'll find out. At the end of the day, what I really want to know is, can I fix this and make it, I don't know, stronger? Even if it didn't have the RAM in it, would I be able to make it thicker? That way, I don't have to worry about, you know, it getting extracted. So the first thing I did was click on one of those areas in the bottom to eliminate uh, all the triangles. So if you don't know, you can click like anywhere, right? And you just hit delete and boom, it click kills all the triangles, makes it one flat surface. It's incredibly handy. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do that. And the reason I did that is because I want to create a 
we'll go back to the not surface solid go back there and I want to create a sketch on that plane right and I'm just going to create it I don't know right about there and we're just going to drag it down and something like that let me just zoom in real quick and make sure that I'm covering all of it. I'm going to hit escape. Yeah, see this line's not quite in there. I want to incorporate the existing and also add new to it. And that was just right at the edge, wasn't it? Who knows? No, it's back there. So, okay. Go up top here. I'm just going to make sure that it's all pulled into the existing geometry. That way it doesn't, you know, I can join it to the existing geometry. This one's going to be difficult. You're going to be a pain in my ass today, I see. Okay. All right. Good enough. Good enough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the offset tool. Does it have me here? There we go. So now I'm going to create an offset. Oh, well, let's make it fairly substantial. I thought about five. But man, that's super thick, isn't it? Yeah, that seems like excessive. Let's do three. Okay. So now we've got a three millimeter offset. I can click on the inside of this, right? And then we'll just go back here to this view so we can watch it, hit extrude, and then we can drag it up. And what I can actually do is just click on this top surface, boink, and it just comes up to meet it. And we're gonna hit join, and yeah, it's sticking out because this has like a flush, some kind of, whatever to it that's fine we can just do this and we're just going to click join all right so now we've thickened that up pretty substantially like it it's still going to break at the layer lines but the point of it is is yeah it could break at layer but there's a lot more layers to hold on to it that's my thought that's my thought i think that might help you know the other thing we've got to deal with here is now we've kind of sealed ourselves up here you know, technically, I can click right here if I wanted to. I should be able to hit extrude and go this way. Cut all the way through it and hit cut. And now my tabs are restored. Right? My tabs are restored and they are substantially thicker. And if you just thought to yourself, well, that's all you really needed to thicken up was the tabs, you're probably right. You're probably right. Um... But this was this was after I, after sitting and thinking, it was either this or do this and just eliminate these tabs altogether and just make a hole so I can just shove my pen through it. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm gonna try this. So let's save this out. Let's get it back into um, the slicer and see if we can color it. See if we can still color it. See if did we destroy the RAM elements or can we still color it? All right, let's try that. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is the original design. This is the one that was uploaded to Maker World, right? And the problem is, is these walls are too thin, and when I went to the car wash, it broke it, and yada, yada. You guys are all up to date. All right, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on this, and we're going to choose Split into Objects. Or no, that's not up there. It's up here. Yeah, right here. Split into Objects. All right, so now we're going to go to Objects, and we're going to see here's RAM and here's Hitch. So I'm going to delete hitch and then that leaves our RAM logo that we lost. All right. So now we got to bring in our version. We're going to bring in, let me see if we can center that we can, and we can't center the other one because it's already centered. That's why. All right. So there we go. So now when I flip it over, boom, we've got our new design that is stronger and the RAM logo in its place where it should be. I think we're going to print it on the H2S and my filament is not technically loaded yet because it was in drying, drying mode. So I'm going to get the filament loaded up. We'll get it printed and then we'll take a look at it.
And that's how I modify an STL. Now you can see the finished product versus the original. Mine is substantially thicker. The layer orientation is still not ideal, but there's just a lot more layers for it to have to deal with. So hopefully this thicker version will hold up to a little more abuse. Of course, I'll let you know. All right, guys, later.